Welcome to the Apostolate's Peace of Heart Forum Classic Series, where hundreds of key personalities in the church share insights and wisdom from classic spiritual literature. These experts are interviewed by the Apostolate's founder from a unique family perspective so that the spiritual insights shared can be applied to our everyday lives and give us peace of heart. Let's now join the discussion. Welcome to the series that we're doing on the secret of Mary. We have with us Father Hugh Gillespie from the missionaries of uh, De Montfort Missionaries to guide us today, Father and Father Bernard Geiger, OFN Conventual. So can we open with a prayer, Father? Yes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We place ourselves in the presence of God and ask for the grace to truly grow in the spiritual life. Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto you, O oh Virgin of virgins, my mother. To you I come. Before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, we're on section three, Father, uh, on the last program, but we didn't get through it. So we want to pick up for where we left off. Or? Yes, if there's a, and again, if there's truly one single paragraph in The Secret of Mary that's mm -hmm. really worth knowing and lingering or even committing to heart, mm -hmm. it's this one. Okay. Monfort puts the goal of the process right in front of his reader. Holiness is your vocation, not priesthood, not religious life, not marriage, not mm -hmm. anything else that we do. Holiness, he says, is our vocation. Mm -hmm. The other ways are simply ways of reaching holiness. Yes. But for Monfort, holiness is the vocation of all of us. And he says, unless all your thoughts and words and actions, all the sufferings and events of your life tend to that end, you resist God by not doing that for which he has created you and is now preserving you. Mm -hmm. The only reason we exist, the only reason we continue in being, Monfort says, mm -hmm. is for this growth in holiness. Mm -hmm. Now, on the one hand, on the one hand, he's basically saying we're all falling short. Yes. Because, of course, all of our thoughts, all of the events of our lives don't always explicitly run in that direction. But he's not saying that to make us despair. He's saying that to basically say, see how far short we just naturally fall by ourselves. Yes. Because at the end of this number, he's going to talk about how this growth in holiness is something that is only possible by means of grace. Mm -hmm. Only God can make this happen in our lives. Mm -hmm. And even the creation of the universe is not so great a thing as the transformation of the human life by the grace of God. And his language is incredible. What an admirable work to change that which is dust into light, to purify that which is unclean, to make holy that which is sinful, to make the creature like its creator, mm. man like God. Wow. Louis de Montfort is often accused, rightly, of having a very negative anthropology. Um, Personally, I think he's correct in that, um, in the sense that Montfort doesn't lose sight of the fact that our sinfulness covers, colors everything we do. Mm -hmm. But what is often not recognized is, as negative as Montfort can be about human sinfulness, he's even more positive about human life under the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Note how strong he is here. And it's this contrast between our limit, our imperfection, our weakness, our sinfulness, and this incredible glory and brilliance mm -hmm. to which we are summoned by God, which is the engine yes. of, of his spirituality. He's saying, you can be so much more mm -hmm. than you already are. Mm -hmm. And the potential in your life, because of the grace of God that you've received in baptism, mm -hmm. is so remarkable Open your eyes, recognize it, and let the grace of God carry you there. Mm -hmm. So rather than dwelling, in a sense, on our sinfulness, what Montfort would prefer to do is put in front of us this incredible image 
of a human life fully transformed by the grace of God and say, this is where we want to go and let's not settle Relax. for second, third, or fourth best here. Right. Let's recognize where we are being called. And the, and the gift, he doesn't mention it by name, but the gift that makes us holy is sanctifying grace. Right. Sanctifying grace by the very name itself, it's the power that sanctifies us, makes us share in the very being of God. Mm -hmm. An incredible gift, a power that makes us share the very being of God. If we could understand that, it would totally blow our minds. Yeah. So right at the very beginning then of his treatise here, mm -hmm. he gives us the goal. Yeah. And he's saying, this is where we want to go. The only question now is, how do we get there? Mm -hmm. So he says, if this is our vocation, growth and holiness, in the next chapter he says, there are pure, tried and true ways of growing in holiness. And in number four, he says, these are the means. And they're known to everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, These are no secret. The means are humility of heart, continual prayer, mortification in all things, abandonment to divine providence, and conformity to the will of God. Mm -hmm. Montfort is saying, it doesn't matter who you are. These are what you need to grow in the spiritual life. These, no one will dispute me on this. Mm -hmm. Okay? So Montfort is saying the way to grow in God in grace is humility, mortification, self-denial, mm -hmm. prayer, abandonment to divine providence, trust that God will care for us, yes. and obedience or conformity to God's will. Mm -hmm. If we do these things, we will grow spiritually and we will walk this way of holiness to which we are called. Mm -hmm. But now Montfort's going to say, but who really can do all of that? Yeah. These things, too, require an incredible amount of grace. And so in number five, Montfort is saying, it's one thing to know that these are the ways to grow in holiness, but we still need God's help to do it. And so here is where he's going to ground his devotion to Mary at the end of point number five. It is the value and the excellence of the grace bestowed by God and corresponded to by the soul that gives our actions their value and their excellence. This is certain. And so in number six, it all comes to this then, that you should find an easy means for obtaining from God the grace necessary to make you holy. And this means has a name, and her name is Mary. But now let's Let's stop right there a moment and recognize what he's just said. Mary is the means by which we will find the grace necessary to grow in holiness, which means Mary is the means by which we will find the grace necessary to have humility of heart, to pray constantly, mm -hmm. to deny ourselves in all things, to truly abandon ourselves to divine providence, and to conform ourselves to the will of God. Mary is not simply a means that is equal to any other means. It's the, She's the way that makes everything else possible. Mm -hmm. So if we want to be humble, Mary. If we want to trust in God's providence, Mary. If we want to obey the will of God, Mary. If we want to truly deny ourselves, Mary. And if we want to pray constantly and effectively, Mary. And so right at the very beginning, notice what he has done. Every important aspect of your spiritual life can be strengthened and made more profound by Mary. And here again, he doesn't use the term, the theological term we would use. What he's talking about here is actual grace as opposed to sanctifying grace, but they work together. Mm -hmm. Sanctifying grace makes us share the very being of God, which is, as Scripture says, a kind of like a divine fire. Um, our God is a consuming fire, uh, the book of Deuteronomy says, and also the letter to the Hebrews. Our God is a consuming fire. That's his very being, that's his very nature, and sanctifying grace makes us share that nature. But then how do you take that divine fire, which is the very being of God, and use it to perform actions which are God-like, mm -hmm. That's what we call sanctifying grace, 
in theological terms. I mean, uh, actual not grace. sanctifying, but actual grace. Mm -hmm. All these various actual graces. And de Montfort is saying then, as you're saying, that Mary, as the mediatrix of grace, brings us these graces. They come from Jesus. They're not hers by, uh, by her very nature. They've been conferred upon her as well. God has and Jesus has given her all of the graces that he won, but she's the one who then brings them and Perfect shares them, them with yes. us. Yes. These, these, these sanctifying and actual graces. Mm -hmm. She intercedes for us that, that Jesus will give us these things and the Holy Spirit will instill them in our, in our mm -hmm. souls and enable us to use them. And in fact, it's this notion of Mary as the vessel and the mediatrix and the fountain of grace that's going to be the launching pad now for everything he says, Montfort says about Mary. Um, Montfort begins with, we need to find grace so that we can grow in holiness. The means of finding grace, the key to finding grace is to find Mary. And so right away then we turn to Mary as the means of our sanctification. Mm -hmm. The necessary means. Now, when Montfort here says Mary is necessary, he's not saying if you don't have a powerful devotion to Mary, you can't have any grace. He's saying if we truly want to grow in Christian perfection, mm -hmm. this is the way. This is the way we need to go. Yes. And so Mary alone has found grace with God, and Mary is the mother of grace, points seven and eight in mm -hmm. The Secret of Mary. These first two points are important. Mary alone has found grace with God, Monfort says. And we stop and we say, hmm. oh, wait a second. Yeah. But for Monfort, grace is understood in a very important way here that we don't want to miss. He says, none of the prophets or patriarchs of the old law found grace with God. Hmm. Well, what's he getting to? Moses, none of them, huh? <laughs> um, yeah. It's a, now, he, Monfort is not saying that there was absolutely no grace to be found in any of these men. For Montfort, grace has a name, and the name of grace is Jesus. And the prophets and the patriarchs of the old law longed for the coming of the Savior, yes. longed for the Messiah, mm -hmm. and they never saw him and never found him. Mm -hmm. And they cried out to God for the Savior. Yes. Mary prayed, and the Savior came. Yes. And so the Savior, grace itself, Jesus Christ came into the world through Mary. The chosen people waited for grace, waited for Jesus, and this young woman was the one who found him. So this is the grace that Mary found, mm -hmm. because for Montfort, all grace, in a sense, is the grace of Jesus. Jesus is the source, the author, yes. the very incarnation of grace. Mm -hmm. And so that's why Mary is the mother of grace. Mm -hmm. So these two points are very connected. Yes. This grace that Mary found is nothing less than Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And because she gave being to the author of life, she is the mother of all grace. And so Montfort is now saying, if we would truly find that grace, which is the grace of Jesus Christ, we have to go to the source, mm -hmm. to Mary, because that is how he has come into the world. That is where we will find him. That's where he started, so that's where we must start. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's, it's true. Right. And it's only after that that Montfort is now going to talk about the plenitude of grace of Mary. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing is Mary finds that grace which is Jesus. Yes. Now Montfort will talk about Mary's grace. God the Father, who is that author of all grace, mm -hmm. has given all graces to Mary. How? By giving her his son. All grace mm -hmm. is the grace of Jesus. And Montfort follows St. Bernard of Clairvaux on this. Mm -hmm. And Bernard is one of Montfort's favorite spiritual writers. Time and time again, he will reference Bernard. Oh, but I like that, Father. That's your name. <laughs> yeah, my patron. <laughs> there we go. Um, but especially, especially when he is talking about the way grace comes to us in and through Mary. Mm -hmm. um, so building on this then, if God the Father has given us Jesus through Mary... Mary, in a sense, is like that great treasury or storehouse of grace. Mm -hmm. And that's the next thing. So you notice how sequentially, step by step, Montfort right. is not, 
taking great pains to expand upon these points, mm -hmm. but there's a real logical sequence mm -hmm. to how he's developing his ideas. Right. God has entrusted Mary with the keeping, the administration, and the distribution of all his graces so that all his graces and gifts pass through her hands. Mary gives to whom she wills, the way she wills, when she wills, and as much as she wills. That's a mouthful. That's mm -hmm. right. And we could stop for a second and sit there and say, oh, how did we get from she's the mother of Jesus mm -hmm. to she dispenses God's grace in this way? Yes. And Moffat's going to say it's really simple. Mary gives us Jesus. Mm -hmm. And grace is the grace of Jesus. Yes. And God confidently trusted Jesus to Mary. Mm -hmm. And not one iota of the grace of Jesus was ever lost. And Mary brought him into the world. And Mary brought him into the world not just by giving birth to him, but by raising him, by caring him for him, by sustaining him. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, in the same way, if God will trust us to give, will trust Mary to give us Jesus, yes. why wouldn't God trust us, mm -hmm. or trust Mary, to give us the other graces that we need, which are in effect the grace of Jesus himself? Yes. God will always continue to act the way God acts. Mm -hmm. And so if God gives us the greatest of graces through Mary's hands, why would not God continue to give us grace mm -hmm. through the hands of Mary? And so Mary, Monfort is insisting, has a fundamental role in the way God cares for us and the way God cares for his world. Mm -hmm precisely because Mary has a fundamental role in the way God sends Jesus into this world and into our lives. That's really part of the a practical application of Paul's doctrine of the mystical body of Christ, because Jesus is the head of his mystical body. Mm -hmm. And as, as de Montfort explained elsewhere, and we'll probably run across it here, um, she's the mother of the head, and therefore, being the mother of the head, she's also the mother of the members. Mm -hmm. And uh, didn't he say somewhere that to be the mother of the head and not the mother of the members would be to be a mother of a monster? But she's not a mother of a monster. <laughs> she's the mother of the whole body. Right. In fact, Father Bernard, he says it right on the next page. In oh, really? 12. Okay. <laughs> and um, your, uh, your instinct was, was entirely correct because mm -hmm. immediately after making that point that all grace comes to us through Mary, Montfort la now launches into his beautiful theology of the mystical body. Mm -hmm. And the first thing Montfort says is, remember, we share the life of Jesus, the grace of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so Montfort says this sharing is complete, not partial. We share in everything. And so if we share Jesus' relationship with his father, we share his relationship with his mother too. We can't pick and choose yes. because we share completely in who Jesus is. That's the next point he makes. Why does all grace come to us through Mary's hand? Because Mary is our mother too, not just the mother of Jesus. And this notion of the spiritual maternity of Mary, Mary, not physically, but spiritually, is genuinely our mother. This is the heart mm -hmm. and the soul of Monfort's theology right here. Mary spiritually is our mother too, mm -hmm. because we share also... the life of Jesus. And because she is our mother too, the mother of all of God's children, as Monfort says in number 11, Mary is the mother of all of us mm -hmm. and the mother of the entire mystical body of yes. Christ. Like it or not. Exactly. <laughs> no, it or not. Exactly. And so Montfort, Montfort uses the image of a monster in two different ways. Mm -hmm. A monster in the order of grace if we have God as our father but not Mary as our mother because that's impossible. Mm -hmm. But then one cannot be the mother of the head of the body and not also the mother of the members that would be monstrous as well. Mm -hmm. But note this, we as members of the mystical body are united by sharing the life of Jesus and we are united under the common motherhood of Mary and the common care and the common concern of Mary. And this is a fundamental 
aspect of Christian unity. Mm -hmm. We share a common mother who cares for us, just as we have a common life which, which, whose heart beats within us, the life of Jesus. And it's this life of Jesus which gives us this common motherhood of Mary. But now, all of a sudden, having heard these two points of Montfort, it makes perfect sense to say that Mary dispenses God's grace to us when and how she will. Yes, right. Because a mother cares for her children in just that way. Mm -hmm. She knows how to care for them, and so she does it properly. And she knows when they need it and, how, and what they need at each yeah. moment. Exactly, exactly. And precisely then, because we share the life of Jesus in this way, in this relationship with Mary, that it's the Holy Spirit who works in and through Mary's maternal care, in and through Mary's motherhood, that all of the elect are produced into the likeness of Jesus Christ. As the Holy Spirit has espoused Mary, note this union of the Spirit with Mary, a, a marital union in a sense. Yes. The Spirit and Mary are so close as to be fundamentally inseparable. Mm -hmm. The Spirit works through Mary in a way He does not work through anyone else. The Spirit has produced in her, by her, and from her His masterpiece, Jesus Christ. And so He now continues to produce the elect in her and by her in a mysterious but real manner. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we are the members of the body of Christ. This point follows on the point above it. If we're really the members of Christ and the Holy Spirit produces Christ in Mary, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is likewise forming us to become more perfect members of the body of Christ. And Maximilian Kobe talks about that too, saying that um, the Holy Spirit and Mary have such a profound uni unity that the Holy Spirit does nothing without her, and she also does nothing without him. And so it's not as if Mary is standing between us and Christ as some kind of an obstacle, but rather she's standing there with Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is using her to bring, her, to bring us into that communion with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so point 14 echoes back to point to number 10, uh, Mary as the universal treasurer of God's grace. Mm -hmm. Now Montfort is saying, as a mother, what does Mary do? She nourishes souls and gives them growth in God, mm -hmm. just like a mother does with her children. Mm -hmm. But now Montfort picks up this interesting image from St. Augustine, who says that even during their present life, all the elect are hidden in Mary's womb, and they are not truly born until the Blessed Mother brings them forth to eternal life. What an interesting image that on the one hand, we are called to go forth into the world in the life of Christ and serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, even as we do that, there is an aspect of ourselves and of the entire church which is still being carried within Mary, as if being within her womb until that day of our definitive and true birth, which is not in this world, but in the world to come. And what that really means is, Montfort is insisting, we will not be fully formed into the likeness of Jesus here on this earth. Each day, ever more fully, we will be formed into that likeness. But that Mary carries us within her until that day, hmm. we come to the full likeness of Jesus. Hmm. Just as she bore Jesus into this world that he might save us, Mm -hmm. she will bear us into the next world, into the full likeness of Jesus Christ, and that is our goal, as he says in point three, holiness in the likeness of God. So when we're going through our death pangs, that's our birth pangs into heaven. Yes, yes. Wow, that's from beautiful meditation. It's a reality. It really is. <laughs> we run out of time, but boy, this is, uh, this is quite a program. So just stay with us and, and go to our website at familyland.org and um, also try the familycatechism.com website too. I think you'll be surprised. But uh, go there. It's, it's free and, uh, and download these programs and share them with your neighbors. Thank you and God bless you.